Well, Noctura are well known for the NHD type twin heatsink designs. Uh, NHD 15 is widely regarded as one of the you know, best air coolers on the market. Uh, we can see that we've got uh, a next generation design that you've got in the works here. Uh, two questions really for you guys. Um, what improvements have you made over the previous designs? And also, how far along the process are you? Well, there are two key differences to the next generation design. The first is uh, that we've now got seven instead of uh, six heat pipes. This is the current generation NHD 15 with uh, six heat pipes. Uh, next generation is going to have seven. And uh, the second difference, uh, the second key difference, is that we went for a slightly wider fin stack. If you look at the coolers side by side, you can see that the fin stacks are slightly wider and this gives us an increase uh, in surface area of around 10%. And uh, yeah, this way we can further increase uh, the performance of the heatsink. Okay, and, and you've obviously got, uh, there's two designs, isn't there? There's one for your, your standard, um, well, multi-socket. Exactly, um, we're going to have uh, four versions all together, so oh, this cool. is uh, the old one. Uh, these are prototypes of the new generation, yeah. uh, and as you can see, we have two different base sizes. One is for uh, AMD Threadripper TR4, uh, with a huge base to cover the entire uh, integrated heat spreader of these processors, and uh, the other is uh, for all the other sec uh, sockets, uh, LGA 2066, uh, AM4 and uh, LGA 1151. Um, with uh, our regular base size and uh, each of the two versions is going to come uh, in both uh, single fan and dual fan configurations uh, depending on whether you prefer to have maximum compatibility uh, or maximum performance. Okay. And uh, you know, as, as far as when people can expect these on the market and also just pricing, do you have any ideas on those, those two things? Well, um, for, we're still doing some final tweaks and uh, tunings. Uh, we definitely hope to have them on the market uh, in the first half of next year. Okay. Uh, Q1 uh, if we're quick, but I don't want to make any promises. Um, for pricing, uh, they're going to be slightly more expensive uh, than the current uh, NHD 15. It's probably going to be around 20 uh, Euro 20 USD more. Okay. And, uh, you know, we talk about the improvements on these coolers. Um, what sort of performance can we expect you know, in terms of temperatures? Yeah. Um, um, well, the first thing we have to stress that, uh, is that these uh, are going to be really uh, top-of-the-line uh, coolers uh, designed for people who want to push their uh, systems to the max. Hard overclocking, extensive turbo use, that kind of thing. So it's not the heatsink you want to buy if you have a say 65 watt or 95 watt CPU, um, because th at that point you won't really see big differences to the current generation. We were um, chatting yesterday, weren't we, about the uh, the TDP um, specifications on these coolers and the fact that some of the manufacturers it's a little bit misleading in some regards. Isn't it? Yeah, t we don't want to give something like a TDP specification because uh, this can be on the misleading side. The key question is what ambient temperature are you running at and what kind of temperature do you allow for the heating element or CPU you're running at. For example, if you're testing at say 10 degree ambient and allow the uh, device you're cooling to go up to 150 degree, it's quite easy to dissipate 500 watts. Mm -hmm. But if you're in a realistic configuration of say uh, not um, letting the, um, the, the the element you're cooling not going above say 70 degree and you're operating at 30 degree ambient it's way more difficult to dissipate yeah. 500 watt so giving something like a general TDP set, uh, specification is very very difficult also a, a big surface area CPU like TR4 mm. is much easier to cool uh, than a small surface area uh, CPU like uh, 1151 because you have much higher heat density on the smaller CPUs and this is why we don't give something like a general um, a specification for uh, for TDP TDP. What we do give is uh, indications of what you can expect for a specific CPU. So for example, we have a demo system running in the background, a TR4 um, system, Threadripper second uh, generation, uh, and it's running at uh, 435 watts. So uh, on 
this kind of platform that's about what you can do with uh, with these coolers. Yeah, we've also got the second uh, demo system in the back with um, heating elements running at 280 watt each and at that kind of heat load uh, we're seeing uh, between 1.5 and 2 degree uh, performance improvement over the current generation. So it's really at the high heat loads uh, yeah, where, so the, where the new generation so shines. At the lower end you're not really going to see much of an improvement between uh, you know the D15 and this next gen. Exactly, yeah. that's why I said um, or I've said it's uh, really for those people who want to push their systems to the max. It's at uh, 150, 200 watt upwards that you're really going to see improvements with the new version. Okay. Thanks very much for that. So that's the next gen from uh, from Noctua. Thank you very much. <laughs>